Today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is having their biggest sale of the year. More on that later. Welcome back, friends, to the shop on this very chilly Tuesday morning, raining like cats and dogs outside. It's a perfect opportunity. We're, we're getting all the rigs ready for winter, putting the Huckapolita winter tires on and double checking and going through the winter survival kits. Now, there's been some changes to the winter survival kit, some pretty major changes from last year. This is kind of a perennial video that we do every year and going through these and, uh, one thing that's uh, absolutely a must is that whatever we choose, everything's got to fit in the old action packer. As you guys know, these are my favorite boxes. You just bite the bullet, buy the Rubbermaid action packers. You'll have them the rest of your life. They're excellent. They can be a bench. They're waterproof. You can stand on them. If you're a short guy, you can get up on the top and get the snow off of your, the ice off your big F-250, right? They're just excellent. But it's got to fit in here. It's a good form factor. You can grab it go you can go from rig to rig to rig you don't have to have like separate kits for everything and usually you don't put so much stuff in it that your wife can't handle it as well okay so uh, my kit is broken down into four categories number one is retrieval then we're going to have uh, vehicle maintenance repair uh, then we're going to have emergency equipment and then personal protective equipment or as our firefighter friends like to say ppe right so there's one other element. Now, if you have a winch, of course, there's the winch component. And, you know, that's going to be the alpha chad that's going to have that, right? So if you are a winch guy, you already know this and you probably don't need this video. So I'm going to, I'm not going to put that in. You know what you're doing, but most folks are not going to have winches, right? So let's get into retrieval. So we'll start at the vehicle. And the thing that's most important, as we know, you never, 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 what? Tow with a trailer ball. It's dangerous. Go online and watch the videos. You want to get something like this. Now, for your retrieval equipment, I'm not endorsing this company, but I have bought a couple things from them, and it's been very good. The Rhino Company. They make retrieval stuff, shovels, uh, clevises, shackles. Um, I've had good luck with them. Their price is excellent. Uh, good company. I, I've never had nothing to complain about. So get yourself one of these. You can get that from Rhino, other companies. It can be steel or aluminum. Spend a little bit extra money, get the aluminum one. It's a lot less weight. You know, all this stuff adds up. You don't want your box to be too heavy, right? This is a grab and go kit. You want to be able to get the call in the middle of the night, grab your kit and go. So you want to have a safe way to connect to your vehicle. Now, presuming you have a two inch receiver hitch, and I don't know why any man wouldn't have a vehicle with a two inch receiver hitch with a trailer ball on it. This is what you're going to have. Get yourself a clevis, put that on there, and that's where you're going to start. That's how you want to tow. So have that. If you're not running it in your rig all the time, then just keep it in your kit. But that's uh, that's important. It all starts right there. Now, I used to tow with the straps. I used to tow with the chains. You know, I've always kind of been into this. I've I've had four-wheel drive since I was 18. And I one of my favorite things to do was we lived in hill country was when it would snow, I would go up on a particular hill in the neighborhood where I grew up. And it was only a matter of time before someone needed pull, pulling out. You know, I never charged anyone. It was just something I enjoyed doing. And I, I just like being prepared. So I've used all that stuff. And this is the best. I, I got into the bubber ropes. These are heavy ropes that were designed for military, I think, lifting freight and stuff with helicopters. This stuff's excellent. Get yourself a bubber rope or the equivalent. It's just a big, heavy rope that's got a lot of stretch in it that is that really assists with pulling out. 30 feet. 30 feet is ideal. Most of the time, you're going to be able to get within 30 feet of a vehicle that needs to be yarded out. Most people just slide off into the ditch. Now, if you really want to one-up your game with this and have some extra kit capacity, get one of these. Call this company, Custom Splice, and ask them for the quarter inch by 50 foot blue diamond winch line. What they'll do is they've got a whole kit right there. You, they'll put the ferrules in there for you. This extends your your capability now you're what 50 67 90 that's math on camera that's brave 90 feet almost 100 feet if someone really gets off or sometimes you might need to get off of an, an angle or a slope and get up on a flat spot this can make a big difference i would if you want to have a really capable kit get your 30 foot bubble rope and get a big one you know if you're pulling out f-250s and big trucks and add this to it and man you are styling now as important as that I have in this kit, now I've gotten rid of all of the, the hard clevises, these guys right here, except for the winch kit right there. I, I'm just not really going to take those anymore. And I was on the fence with that until I, I, I was up and pulled Jiraiya out a couple days ago, and I just saw there's really no need for it. You want to get these soft clevises. They're so much gear, right? 
soft shackles, right? Soft shackles, whatever. Uh, what these are is they're, uh, they have an abrasion resistant material. It's basically made out of the same stuff as these bubber ropes, right? But, uh, you can put them on anything and you can wrap them around a differential. You can wrap them around a frame. You can wrap them around whatever you want. And they're just awesome. And they're not going to tear up equipment. You know, they're, they're not going to just not as gnarly and, and rough as that metal stuff. And if something breaks and you have something flying back at you through the windshield, there's no weight in this. There's no mass to it. It's not going to kill anyone. It's just for the safety aspect alone, uh, it's worth it. So I've gotten rid of the, the old school ones, and I've went with these, and I carry three of these uh, in my kit right there. So that's basically the retrieval stuff right there. Now, for your own extrication, to extricate yourself out of a difficult situation here in the Pacific Northwest, of course, we have the worst possible environment where it's always hovering around 33, 34 degrees. So you have that melted water on the ice, and you sometimes you'll just slip you can just not even be moving and the car will start slipping into the ditch. So when you get in a situation like that or some Philistine doesn't know how to drive in the snow and you're going up a hill and he stops in the middle of the hill for some reason, now you've lost traction, you can't get going again. Well, the solution for that is cat litter. Cat litter. Get yourself a freezer bag, two freezer bags, double bag it because it will leak and make a big mess all over your box. Fill up, get the big one, put as much in there as you can, and it spread that out, that cat litter out a little bit, and you will have the ability to, to get traction and get going. It works like magic. And if you blow a radiator hose, you got something to so soak it up with, right? All right, so the cat litter is important. Got to have a shovel. Got to have a shovel. Now, in the past, I've carried the, I think even last year, I carried those uh, kind of a foldable avalanche shovel. I never really liked it. It was plastic, and it was really big, and it really didn't fit in the kit very well. This isn't as good in the snow as, as that, but the military style shovels, again, this is the one I got from Rhino. They seem to have the best reviews and the best price. This is just the military style that folds up into a, a pretty good sized shovel. You can pry with it. It's got some serrated teeth on it. If need be, you can um, chop and hack with it, uh, but and you can dig. That's the most important thing. I had a whole bunch of trouble. I was stuck in my in the adventure van just, what, three weeks ago up in Long Beach, Washington, up in the sand. Of course, I didn't have my retrieval kit because I, I don't know why, I, I didn't, I was thinking winter, you know, it wasn't winter, but had I had this, I wouldn't have to dig out for an hour by hand with my, uh, with my paws, right? So you want one of these. These are really good. All right, moving into kind of the vehicle maintenance side of it, I've ditched the big jumper cables. It was a hard thing for me to do, but it was an extra bag, you know, because to have proper jumper cables that are big enough where you can jump a diesel or a big truck. They're, they gotta be big, you gotta buy the good ones, right? And because batteries are in all sorts of strange locations and situations come up where you're, let's say a guy's got a dead battery and he's nosed in in a parking lot, you might have to come from the backside so they've gotta be long, they gotta be 20 footers. So that's a big bag of its own. And so now I've got two bags to deal with. I got rid of it and I finally trust these things. So the electric lithium jumpstart boxes. Pick your poison. I've had several of them. I know that the NOCOs don't have the highest performance, but what they do have is excellent build quality. So I watched the review on um, on the Farm Channel, and, and these didn't rate the highest, and I get that, but I love the way that they're built because I've had some of the other ones that were recommended and the plugs failed on them because they were just inferior, they were just poorly made. So I've, I really like the NOCOs. These are good jump chargers. They come at a cost, though, because you have to maintain them. The battery is constantly draining down. You've got to know that, and you've got to make sure that it's, it's kept up. Also, that lithium doesn't like cold weather, and it really struggles if you live in a cold environment, so you've got to keep it warm. So if your kit's inside of a warm car, that's fine, uh, but just know that going into it. All right, so also just throw in a multi-tool of some sort. Your multi-tool should have two things, a pair of pliers and a knife. Anything outside of that is just a bonus, but have those two things in your multi-tool. There's almost always a rise in break-ins during the holidays. That's why Simply Safe is having their best sale of the year right now. If you use the promo code in the description heading, you'll get 30% off your complete system purchase and they'll throw in a free HD camera. Simply Safe on home. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective and reliable home security system that will make your home safe. If you've been feeling worried about safety and putting it off, just not wanting to deal with it, Simply Safe makes it very easy to secure your home. Just order it online or on the phone. It'll come in the mail to your front door. 
you can usually have your system set up in less than an hour. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24 seven. And if anything goes wrong, they're there to call the police for you. There's never been a better time to get your Simply Safe system. Use the promo code, I'll put it in the subject heading for you. Simply Safe forward slash Wrangler Star to save 30% off your system and get that free HD camera. Simply Safe always asks me to share my favorite feature of the system. This month, it's the keyless entry. Home. I'm not the most organized person, believe it or not, so having that keyless entry where I don't have to worry if I always have a key when I leave is really nice to have. Duct tape. Again, I'm preaching, preaching about this. You want to get good duct tape. Get a roll of it. Either get Mil-Spec or get uh, 3M name brand or Gorilla. Don't buy the dollar store stuff. It's not all created equal. This is something you don't want to skimp on. This stuff, this Gorilla duct tape is so good. I put it on plywood before, like max, masking down the floor, and pulled it up, a, and it actually pulled the wood grain off. It's it's good. I I, I like the Gorilla brand. Combination and these these two work together. Well, the fiber fix tape. This fiber fix tape is like a, imagine an ace bandage, like you use for wrapping a, a a wound. Well, you wrap can wrap this around. You could literally fix a broken shovel handle. You take this out, it's sealed up, you wrap it around and it, it hardens, hards like steel. You could repair an exhaust pipe, lots of different things. So this is a good combo. I've never had to use it, but I always keep it in my kit. My gra This wasn't around when my granddad put his kits together. He was he had really good kits because he was a mechanic and he had broken down before and, and he, knew, you know, he knew what to take. So a lot of the stuff I've learned from him, but he would have had this for sure. I would have given a case of it for his birthday. So have those two, two together. Now you're going to want to have a good flashlight. Get a go with a good stream light. Get an emergency style light like this one. Uh, something that's a bright color that if you leave it or drop it in the snow or you can find it in the middle of the night. Preferably AA batteries and always run lithium. Always, always run lithium. Lithium batteries are going to last longer. They're lighter and they're they're better quality. They're not going to corrode and break down and destroy your your equipment or your tools. And have an extra set. So if your, bat your flashlight takes four, have an extra four right there. You've got to have the flashlight. Now, you want to have some sort of a road flare. Pick your poison. You can go with old school road, road flares. Those are nice because they're dual purpose. They're good fire starters as well as they serve a purpose for warning traffic. You know, you might be on a corner. Usually these things seem to happen at night, and you can be put yourself at risk. Some guys in the comments took me to task the other day that I didn't put flares out when I was retrieving um, a Jiraiya's rig, and, and I get that. That's a good point. I had them. I could have thrown them out there, uh, but it was a long stretch, and people were not very many people driving up there, so I didn't really think it, but it wouldn't have been a bad idea. But I love these, these Hikona or, or whatever. There's, they're branded by lots of different companies. You can get them on Amazon. It's a magnetic puck, so you could stick it on the back of your car. You could stick it on a, a guardrail, a road sign, and you just turn it on, and it gives you a nice flashing deal. So throw one out one one direction, throw one out the other direction, and it, it could save you from getting ran into it and getting hurt. Also, there's an integrated uh, flashlight in here. Not the best flashlight, but we like options, right? If you could have redundancy and options, that's good. Oh, we've got a hateful interface. Goodness. Just, I want it to turn on and to turn off. I just don't like flashing modes. But those are pretty good. Reflectors would work as well. Cell phones are important. How Jiraiya got a hold of us when he slipped off the road was through a cell phone. He had to walk a little ways down the hill to get signal, but he had it. But have a backup battery for these things. We really rely upon them for communication now. They're really important. So have you get one of these cheap extra batteries. These You can buy these for nothing on Amazon now. Have this. Have an extra charger cord that's dedicated that you're not going to rob and steal. Don't tell your wife about it. She'll come and get it. And uh, and have a wall plug. So have an ability, multiple ways of getting that um, that phone charged up if you just didn't have enough certain, enough charge. To round up the survival stuff or just about have a fire starter, two ways. Always two ways with fire starters. You want to have um, a windproof uh waterproof windproof matches the big uh, british lifeboat matches keep the striker inside there they're proprietary you know it's not like the days back when we used to light the old diamond match on the back of your 501s you know these have to have their own striker there's a safety issue there so make sure you put the striker in there and gritty surface to gritty surface if you <laughs> these things have actually will turn into a bomb if you I know it's rare, but it can happen. If this ignites in there, it's under pressure, and all those match heads go off, that could be a problem. So make sure you put the, the, the scratchy side face-to-face -face so that there's no way for it to uh, ignite. Have a backup source, too. Something that 
not only will start a fire, but will, if you're in a wet, cold environment, which we're going to be in winter, this is the winter kit that you can get a fire going even if you have wet wood. So cotton balls with Vaseline, uh, some of these proprietary fire starters, whatever. Uh, you can use grease wood, uh, pitch sap wood, throw some kindling in there. Do, do what you have to do. Candles. Candles work really good. That's what my granddad always carried. I remember many a time... 20 below, 10 below elk hunting, uh, stopping and having lunch freezing, and he'd pull out a little candle in that wet wood, and he'd chop some sap off the tree, and we'd get that going, that candle, that wax kept that long enough to get that wood dried out. Those are fond, fond memories. Have an emergency blanket. You can get these wrapped up pretty tight. I don't really like the little cellophane ones. They, they be, they're better than nothing, but these bigger, heavier ones, these survival blankets, this one's by Blizzard. They've got a little bit of mass to them, but they still pack up nice, are excellent. If you've got the room for wool blankets, that's even better. But there's something, I, I have used blankets a lot. I've rolled up on a lot of car accidents, uh, people that have had fender benders and stuff and in cold environments and people running around outside. And, and if someone's injured or going into shock, that blanket goes a long way psychologically and helps with shock. And it's just, if you got stuck, just for your own family, you could all huddle underneath it, right? So have an emergency blanket. That's really something that's overlooked. It's really important. And also, I'm going to carry, man, I love, I'm a big fan of the classic space blanket. I have multiples of these. They're in every kit. They're so handy. Get the red one. Don't get the blue or the green. Make sure you get the bright red. You could use it as a signaling device. If you got stranded, you can lay it out on the ground. You can secure it with four rocks. Aircraft can see it. It can be seen from a long direction. It's got silver reflective on the other way. You could even use it as a kind of an impromptu signaling device. You're crawling underneath to, to untangle your wife's cable chains <laughs> that she bought before you married her because you would never buy cable chains that always come off and wrap around the axle, right? So you can, uh, and you got your nice Pendleton board shirt on because you watched a Wrangler Star movie or video. Lay this down in that slush and keep yourself dry. Also, now you've got two blankets, so you've got a backup, right? These are excellent. These space blankets are the thing. And get the name brand. Don't, don't cheap out on that. You'll use it for, for everything. And then finally for the tool category, I'm going to have a, I've got a little Fisker's axe that I like to put in there because as a short handle, not because I'm going to be chopping down trees with this phony little thing, but primarily because it's just a tough, blunt, blunt striking tool that's very strong. Um, I can pry with it. I can split things. I mean, you might need to chop out uh, some sheet metal because of a fender bender and, and the sheet metal's bent in and it's, and it's risking slashing your tire. You might have to chop out a, uh, chop through a chain and you can do it. I've chopped through chains before. Don't ask me how and when, but I've had to extricate myself with getting behind lock gates back when I was a little bit more of a rebel. Uh, you've got a pull, heavy pull on the back, so you've got a hammer, so you can strike, push pins, lots of different things. This is a handy little tool. You gotta have something like this. And, and the fiberglass handles on the Gerbers or the Fiskers are, they're just, you don't have to worry about them. There's just no maintenance involved. And a saw. Especially if you live in the Pacific Northwest. Windstorms, ice storms, those dug firs go down across the road all the time and you're caught behind it and you just want to get home. Well, you can get through them right that like this. It's going to take a while to get through a 24-inch dug with with this guy, but you can do it, right? And trust me, you won't be cold when you're done when you're done sawing. So there is an added benefit to that as well. But the Silky Big Boy is a good saw because it fits well in the kit and it's it, you can do serious work with it. You can get two hands on it. It's a good saw. Um, these should be in every man's kit uh, right there, the Silky Big Boy. And then finally, it's going to be my PPE, my personal protective equipment here. And that consists of three things. Have a good set of gloves. Putting your chains on, it's going to be cold, your hands are going to be freezing, you're going to be hating life. Have some good gloves, leather gloves, you just can't go wrong with those, um, but put those in there. Have those dedicated, as well as a thrift store rain jacket, some old beater with a hood on it, make sure it has a hood on it. I've gotten stuck before and had to hike out many miles in the rain, and I was very happy to have a rain jacket with a hood on it and a beanie. So just go to the thrift store, just get some junk, right? Just something to throw in there and secure it with a, uh, with a ranger, ranger strap. And that makes up your kit. All this will easily fit inside the action packer. And how we use it is it'll go in Mrs. W's car if we're going to be going up skiing or something and taking that or out of town. I'll throw it in there. I'll throw it in the back of the adventure van or my truck. Um, but the thing that's nice about it is when you get that call in the middle of the night and your son or daughter or, or wife or loved one or neighbor is in a bind, 
You know, you, you don't have to run around like a chicken with your head cut off and you don't have to waste time because, you know, they're out there getting cold. You know, maybe they don't even have any heat and it could take you an hour and a half running around with your Ho Chi Minh slippers on in the middle of the night trying to round all this stuff up and did you really get everything? So think about it now when you're not under stress and you're clear-headed. Put your kit together and you don't have to worry about it. Never think about it again. Just check it once a year, charge up those batteries, and you're good to go. Um, but every man should have this kit in there. You want to be... Um, uh, you want to guy, be the guy that has the solutions, not a guy that uh, is a problem for everybody. So that's why I look at it. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's anything we should add to the kit. We learn together, and um, I'll be in there, and we can have some dialogue, and uh, that's it. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families, and please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video.